church. What a wonderful day for God's people everywhere to come together as a family, one body of believers to worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, Psalm 122 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord just to give thanks to the name of the Lord. And I believe it is also a good reason for us to be here today. I am Evangelist Davis Worley, and on behalf of the saints who worship in Sandtown, West Baltimore, Maryland, I pray the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ upon you all, and I bid you greetings. We welcome you, friends, to our worship service via live stream. It is our pleasure to invite you into our worship, and we are delighted that you have chosen to spend that just a few moments of your time with us on today. We know that there are many other things that you could be doing, but God placed it on your heart to visit with us. And while we would have preferred to be with you in person, we are thankful for your interest and your desire to worship with us today. Churches all around the world are modifying how they worship due to the coronavirus. Friends, this threat is real and we all must take it seriously. It is wise that we take the necessary precautions to protect ourselves against becoming infected, but also that we do not unknowingly endanger the lives of others. So until, until such time that we can assemble ourselves together, we will continue to worship God in spirit and in truth by social media stream and other means that are available to us. Friends, we are determined to give God the praise that only he deserves by any means necessary. Friends, our God is great and worthy to be praised. Besides him, there are no other gods. And we are determined to honor him as we have been taught by example of those before us, according to Acts chapter number 20, verse number 7, and 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, upon the first day of the week. Friends, our love for Jesus keeps us strong, um, encouraged, uplifted, and focused on praising him no matter the obstacles, viruses, germs, diseases, pestilence, or unreliability of men. Our God is a conqueror, a shield, a defender, a comforter, a strong defense. He's a, a, a fortress, a mighty warrior. He's king of kings and lord of lords. He hears the cry of his children, my friends, and he comes to our defense. First Peter chapter number three, first Peter chapter number three, verse number 12 tells us that the eyes, my friends, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. My friends, our God has never lost a battle and he never will. Let's pray together. O oh Lord our God and our Father in heaven, we are eternally grateful to you. We're thankful, Father, for this day that you have given us, a day in which we have never seen before, and another opportunity to come together as a family, Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we come now admitting that we have sinned against you. There are things that we have said, thoughts that we have had. We've done something, dear Lord, that is not been in accordance with your will. And Father, we ask now that you would do as you have already promised us in your word, and that is if we confess our sins, that you would be just to forgive us of our sins. And Father, we come also asking that you would continue to bless the leaders of this world, Father. Be with each and every one. Help them, Father, as they continue to seek ways of peace, Father as they continue to seek ways to, to come together, to work together, that we might be able to enjoy all of life's pleasures without any fear of harm or danger. And Father, we just thank you so much 
for all that you have done and all that you continue to do in our lives. We thank you, dear Lord, and we ask also, Father, that uh, you would bless those who are working so diligently to come up with a cure for this coronavirus, Father. All those scientists, those, those doctors, those biologists, Father, physiologists, all those who are working to help us all. And Father, we know that while they have skills and abilities, none of them have your skills or your abilities. So we're asking, Father, that you would please work with them, help them, that we might soon have a cure, Father, a vaccination that will allow us to begin doing some of the things that we used to do. And Father, we pray also for this for this nation, for those who are protesting peacefully, Father, for those who are protecting them and, and, and those, Father, who are on the front line. We know that this pandemic, Father, is still ongoing and many lives are still being infected. And so as people think of protesting and, and, and having all manner of of, 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 of gatherings. We're just asking, Father, that everyone would be mindful of protecting themselves so that they will be able to protect others as well. Father, please be with us, your children, and help us to reach out to this world and, and be the lights that you have called us to be. Father, we love you. We thank you. And we pray, dear Lord, as we present this worship service unto you today, that all things will be acceptable in your sight. And Father, our desire, our hope, our prayer also on today is that your word will go forth and that someone might hear the truth in your word that might cause them to consider their relationship with you and your son and ask that faithful question, what must I do to be saved? Father, we love you. We honor you. We glorify you and only you. And we thank you once again for this opportunity that you have given us today. It is in the mighty and matchless name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our High Priest, and our King, Jesus the Christ, that we do humbly pray. Amen. Friends, welcome to the Church of Christ. Be at ease, be confident, and find peace for your troubled soul. Please join us now as we worship God in congregational singing with song leaders from all over the Church of Christ as we lift up our voices in praise to God in songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. I woke up this morning with my mind.
praise His name, say I. Good. 
Yeah. <laughs> 
Good morning, church, and welcome, friends. As the old preacher once said, I'm not going to hold you long, but for the next few minutes, I am going to try to hold you strong. Friends, our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Hebrews, the book of, book of Hebrews, chapter number one, the book of Hebrews, chapter one, verses one and two. And if you will be so kind as to read along with me at home, I will read to you aloud. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And the scripture reads, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Friends, today many of us will spend some time reflecting and showing affection to our earthly fathers and considering how wonderful it is to have a father. We'll consider the valuable life lessons they taught us and the basic principles they instilled in us. We all should be grateful to our fathers for their teachings and the, and the insight they shared with us. And since the focus is on our men, Today I want to speak directly to the men. I want to speak directly to the men. As we reflect on the greatness of our fathers or men who are important in our lives, I submit to you that there is no man, no man, who should be honored above our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A man whose principles have, have taught men throughout time what no earthly father ever could. His teachings have, have helped me to realize there's still more that I need to do to become the man that God wants me to be. That man's moral standards and, and God's are not the same. They're not the same. Friends, God left us this manual that we call the Bible, which is filled with examples of what manhood is really all about. And as we study the life examples of Jesus and consider his teachings, he grooms us and helps us to grow into the kind of men that God wants us to be. Manhood must be taught from an early age because if not, young boys will develop a false interpretation of manhood leading them to a misrepresentation of their roles in society. So fathers must prepare. We have an obligation to prepare our young men for manhood. King, King Solomon said in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 4, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 3 through 7, there King Solomon said, When I was my father's son, tender, and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me. And said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands and live, get wisdom, get understanding. Don't forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. And she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Fathers, we must teach our children to love God's word. For only in it can wisdom and truth be found. We must teach them to respect us, but revere God and his mighty power. Love us, but love God more and appreciate his mercy, his grace, and the joy of being his child. And since the world is focusing on earthly fathers today, my topic is, fathers, get your house in order. Fathers, get your house in order. And friends, today I'm going to make three points, three quick points, and the message will be yours. And friends, here in the Church of Christ, we believe the things that we preach, the things that we teach, you ought to be able to find right here in God's Word. So while you're sitting at home, we want you to grab something to write with. Get yourself 
a pen, a pencil, a crayon. Get something to write with. Grab a sheet of paper. We want you to take copious notes. That means a whole lot of notes. Check us out. See if the things that we teach and the things that we preach are what thus saith the Lord. So today I'm going to make three points, friends, and the message will be yours. Number one, God created fathers to be leaders. God created fathers to be leaders. Number two, fathers must set good examples. Fathers must set good examples. And number three, fathers must teach their household to respect God. Fathers must teach their household to respect God. You know, sometimes, friends, we just need to hear the truth. And today you've tuned in to the right place. So to my first point, God created fathers to be leaders. Friends, verse 1 of our scripture reading says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. God spoke to the fathers. God spoke to the fathers. Men. Friends, only a man can be a father. God spoke and gave specific instructions to men who were the heads, leaders of their households. When God created the family, he, he commanded that the man should be the head, the leader of the family. If you go back and look at Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter number 3, after Adam and Eve sinned against God and ate of the forbidden fruit, and, and after God pronounced the serpent's punishment for his deception he directed his attention toward the woman and he told her in verse number 16 he said your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you friends that means God designated men to be the head of the family the leader ladies I'm not throwing shade at you. Please don't misunderstand. Not uh, throwing shade at the ladies. I'm just explaining the text. Now, I know that's not what we see in many families today. But today's family structure has turned away. Has turned from the way God originally intended things uh, to be. The heart of man has turned from God and, and man has decided that a family can consist of whatever you want, regardless of what God says. It can have one or more leaders or no leader at all. But in the beginning, friends, it was not so. God designed the family with the man as the head, the leader. And what we see happening today is a, a societal shift from God's original design of the family to all manner of arrangements and behaviors that God hasn't authorized. And these new man-made family configurations undermine God's authority and defile his original plan for the family. And consequently, friends, men are no longer assuming their responsibilities as the head of the home. So women are stepping up and stepping in to fill a role that does not belong to them. If you look at the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 29, verse number 18, there the scripture says, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. That means that without proper leadership, people will do whatever they want. Whatever seems right or feels right to them, that's what they'll do. But God gave the responsibility, my friends, of leading the family to men. He gave that responsibility to men. And with it, he gave men his vision. But somehow, somewhere along the way, men have lost God's vision, abdicated their roles as leaders, and submitted to the ways of the world. The devil has crept in, clouded our minds and change the, the ideology of what real men are supposed to be. And because men are not being the leaders that God created them to be, it's threatening our most vulnerable assets, our women 
and our children. Friends, our parents, grandparents, and seniors can't even take a stroll through the very neighborhoods they built with their own blood, sweat, and tears. Because some of our youth are out of control. Our children are not safe at, 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 the, at the playgrounds or, or in front of their own homes. Because somebody might do a drive-by and innocence is taken away. People are acting crazy, doing things they ought not do, and saying things in front of our children that our children should never hear. Friends, the world has gone mad and the devil loves it because he's having his way. He's having his way. And we blame the government and everybody else for problems that can easily be resolved or corrected by our men if we step up and be men. Be the leaders that God created us to be. Friends, the world is deteriorating rapidly before our eyes and we are reluctant and often unwilling to correct the wrongs that we have embraced in our society. Things that should shock us don't. We become numb. We've gotten to a point where our, our only interests are the things that satisfy our flesh. Men have lost their focus, compromised their values, and are no longer pursuing the righteousness of God. Instead of being leaders and teachers, we have embraced immorality. And what's sad, my friends, what's sad is that some of us are happy to do so and are comfortable with it. So to fathers everywhere who are not being the leaders, who are not being the leaders God created you to be. If you're not being the man that God wants you to be, then you're not being a man. You are not being a man. It's time to get your house in order. Friends, leadership is important. It's important. We witness the wrong type of leadership every day, especially the lack of leadership that's coming from our government right now. Their decision making is horrendous. In some cases, they've gone over the deep end, distancing themselves further and further away from God, doing things that, that displease God. Just look at our communities, our, our nation and this world. Some men are so busy doing the devil's work that they're not being the leaders that God wants them to be. Now, I, I know we have some good men, some outstanding men in our society and in the church who believe in doing what's right, who set good examples and try hard to be good leaders in and out of their homes. I understand that. But there are some men, friends, some men who have rejected righteousness and won't even attempt to do what's right. Good leadership is important or else we're headed for destruction. Poor leadership, friends, poor leadership or lack thereof is one of the reasons why so many homes are in disarray and we're having uh, so many problems among our youth. Fathers are failing to lead properly and being the men God created them to be. We complain about our youth all the time. Always complaining about our youth. About their lack of discipline, their lack of respect and motivation. When in reality, we ought to be complaining about our men. That's right, I said it. We ought to be complaining about our men. We are the leaders. We are the leaders. Men are the leaders. Not our women. Not our children. And especially not our government. 
Young boys don't teach themselves how to become men. That's a man's responsibility. So if there's a problem with their behavior, there's a problem with a man or a lack of positive men in their lives. Fathers, it's time to stand up. Be the man God created you to be. It's time to get your house in order. Woman can't teach a, 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 a boy how to be a man. And a man can't teach a girl how to be a woman. We each have our own roles and responsibilities in the family. So if there's a breakdown with our young men, there's a failure with our older men. That's right, I said it. But we can change it. We can change it. We can turn things around if we turn to God. Only God can teach us how to become the kind of men that he wants us to be and set positive examples for our children. Only God can teach us true leadership. Which brings me to my second point. Fathers must set good examples. Fathers must set good examples. Friends, all fathers should set good examples. But Christian men must set godly examples for their families, our young men, and the world. Our children imitate what they see us do. Our children imitate what they see us do. Therefore, the examples we set are the ones that they will follow as they grow older. So the examples we set for our young men are essential. It is essential. How do they see their father? How do they see you, the man of the house? Do they see a father who loves his family? Or one who destroys his family with anger, hatred, and violence? Do they see a father who loves his wife or one who mistreats her? Do they see a father who is kind, compassionate, and loving towards his wife? Or do they see a father who is disrespectful, abusive, and profane? If your child sees you beating, cursing his mother. You're teaching him to hate women. Even his own mother who gave birth to him. But if he sees you loving, cherishing her, complimenting and protecting her, he won't stand for it when he sees another man mistreating a woman. And Lord, help your son and me if your son marries my daughter and doesn't know how to respect a woman. Does your children, your son, do they see a father who is always high on some kind of drug or drunk? Remember, the examples we set are the ones they're going to follow. At some point, they're going to demonstrate what they've learned at home. That's why the examples fathers set are so important. Do they see a father rising up early in the morning, preparing himself for work? Or do they see a father getting up at the noonday, going to hang out on the street corner? Do they see a father who leads his family to God, preparing himself for worship on Sunday morning, Bible study during the midweek, and taking his family to worship? Do they see a father studying his Bible, God's Word? And does daddy study the Word with the family? 
Friends, I believe that if we're honest, we would have to admit that most of us give our children an option. We give them an option. In this generation, parents always ask their children first. You'll ask little Pookie. Pookie, do you want to go to church with me? No, nah, I'm staying home. Okay, I'll see you when I get back. Get some food on the stove. Not in my house. Not in my house. When I was growing up, mama said, get up. And we got up. She said, get dressed for worship. And we got dressed. She said, when I walk out this door, all of y'all better be behind me. And we were all like little ducklings just right behind her, following her to church. Whether we wanted to go or not, we went because mama said, we going. She didn't give us a choice. But not so today. Uh-uh. Not so today. Children have options. Fathers, get your house in order. Give them one option, one, and that is to follow the example that you set. But make sure, make sure it's a godly example. Which brings me to my final point. Fathers, we must teach our households to respect God. Fathers must teach their household to respect God. We must teach our children to respect God. Verse 2 of our scripture reading tells us that in these last days, God has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Luke chapter number 9. Luke chapter number 9, verse number 35. When Jesus took John, James, and Peter with him up on the mountain to pray, they witnessed Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter suggested that they build three tabernacles, one for Jesus, one for Moses, one for Elijah. But God wasn't pleased with his recommendation. And while he was speaking, a cloud came and overshadowed them. And God spoke, saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. And Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse number 50, Every word the Father has told me to tell you, I speak. Every word. Friends, God commands us to listen to Jesus and obey his words. So if we don't respect what Jesus tells us, we don't respect God. We don't respect God. Proverbs chapter number 9, verse 10 teaches us the fear, my friends, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Friends, we must have a healthy respect for God. A healthy respect for God. The scripture says this is the foundation of wisdom. A wise father lays the foundation by teaching his family to respect God above all others. And to live righteously before him. He studies God's word with the family so that they understand God's principles. In fact, friends, in fact, long before Jesus died upon the cross, God commanded men to teach their families his statutes. If you go back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 6, Deuteronomy chapter number 6, begin around verse number 4. There Moses said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength. These words I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hands and they shall be frontlets. Between your eyes, you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Friends, God told Moses to command the fathers to teach their households to respect 
him always. They were commanded to study God's word every day. To remember his laws and make them a part of their lives within and outside of their homes. And this way they would take the Lord with them wherever they went. Just like the song we sing. Take the Lord with you everywhere you go. Today, we complain if we have Bible study more than once a week. Even in the midst of this coronavirus, God has made it so much easier for us. He's made it so much easier for us to participate in worship and Bible study. We don't have to leave the comfort of our home. You can sit there like you are now in your pajamas, in your slippers, in your house robe. And all you have to do is dial. Dial a number. Just dial a number. Or touch a link. And you can be in any worship service anywhere in the world. But some of us can't even make time to do that. How sad. We've lost our respect and our love for God. Proverbs chapter 22, verse number 6 tells us to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. But how can we train our children in the way to go if we're not willing to go ourselves? If we depart from the way... They will never know the way. Fathers, we've got to teach our children while they're young so that when they get old, they understand what is expected of them. Give them good biblical teaching so that they, they'll stay the course and never stray from the path of righteousness and be able to recognize false doctrine when they hear it. But you can't teach them God's way if you are not willing to learn his way. Fathers, get your house in order. We got to teach our children. Friends, what we teach our children matters. It matters. How many times have you heard someone say, that boy, he just like his daddy. He just like his daddy. If someone said that about your son, would it be a compliment? Would it be a compliment? What if they said it out of disgust? What does that say about you? Are your children just like you? Are they a chip off the old block? Remember, they follow the example you set. Fathers! Get your house in order. You know, we make it so easy. We make it so easy for the devil when we don't teach our children sound biblical principles. And friends, if we don't teach them what's right, someone else will teach them what's wrong. We allow the TV, their friends, the internet, social media, and everyone else to saturate their minds with things that they should never learn. Things that they should never learn. That's why God said, teach them to love and respect Him because if they don't, they're going to have some major problems. Major problems. But if they fear and respect God, God says, I will give them long life. I'll give them long life life. Friends, right now there are many fathers, many fathers who are teaching their children to, to protest and to march for equality and stand up for their God-given rights. And this is good. This is good. There's nothing wrong with that. Children should know their rights and, and understand that we are all equal in the eyes of God. God is no respecter of persons. You're teaching them to protest. But are you teaching them to praise God? 
Are you teaching your children to respect God? Are you teaching them to live righteously before God? You're teaching them to march. But are you, are you marching them to worship? Are you leading them in the march to worship? You're teaching them to stand up. But are you teaching them to stand up for Jesus? You're teaching them to social distance. But are you distancing them from God? Friends, civil protest has its merit. It has its merit. But godly obedience leads to eternal life. Do you want your children to have eternal life. You see, fathers, God intended for men to be the lead, the head of the family and teach our children to love and respect Him. That's our responsibility. It's our responsibility. And we are to pass on His teachings from generation to generation. That's what God expects. No matter how long we live, the scripture says God's word will be here long after we dead and gone. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Friends, no matter how many generations come and go, God's word will never change. It'll never change. It will always remain. Fathers, we can change this world. We can change this world if we simply teach our children to love, fear, and respect God. We can do all the marching, protesting, shouting, burning, rioting, voting, and crying. We can do all that we want. But before we can realize the change we seek in this world, we, we fathers, have to be the change we seek. You must get your house in order. Fathers, get your house in order. That's my message on this morning. Fathers, get your house in order. And fathers, you can begin by believing the gospel that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He came to earth, died for our sins. Just simply believe the gospel. Why? Because Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who do diligently seek Him. You must repent of your sins, which simply means you make up your mind right now that you want to get your house in order. You want to start living right before God. Why? Because Jesus said in Luke chapter 13, verse number 3, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Confess that you believe Jesus is the Son of God. Why? Because Romans chapter number 10 verses 9 and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will, my friends, you will be saved. For with a heart one believes unto righteousness and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. And finally, finally, friends, according to Acts chapter number 2 verse number 38, you must be baptized. You must be baptized, which is a total bodily submersion in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you shall my friends you will receive the precious gift of the Holy Spirit you will rise a new creature in Christ get your house in order and serve God for the rest of your life Friends, on behalf of the Church of Christ in Sandtown, 
West Baltimore, Maryland. Happy Father's Day to fathers all around the world. Be blessed and be safe. Friends, on behalf of the Church of Christ in Sandtown, West Baltimore, Maryland, I'd like to thank the many churches of Christ that supported our worship today and thank you for joining us. If you would like a, a personal Bible study or have any questions about anything you heard today, contact information for the Church of Christ in Sandtown, West Baltimore, Maryland, and, and other churches of Christ in your area will be displayed at the end of this live stream. Friends, we encourage you to visit a Church of Christ near you. When the opportunity allows, visit a Church of Christ near you. If you'd like to support our work, please note our GoFundMe page and Cash App, and you can make your contribution there. Friends, we encourage you and the Churches of Christ all over the world to keep the faith. Don't give up hope and know that God is willing and able to do all things. I'm Evangelist Davis Worley, and until we meet again, God bless, keep, and comfort you and reveal the truth in His Word that it might open your understanding and cause you to consider your relationship with God and Christ before it is eternally too late. Be blessed and be saved.